Hi, I reviewed a couple of digital microscopes on this channel not too long ago, and the ones I reviewed happened to supply with this companion soldering mat, and that got me thinking, I probably should test these out to see if they are ESD safe. So in this short video, we're going to do just that. To do this, we'll need to measure the electrostatic charge on the surface, and of course we'll need to have some special equipment to do that. Luckily, I have an electrostatic field meter, and it can be used for this very purpose. I actually did a teardown and some analysis of how this static field meter works many years ago, and that was one of my earlier videos, which I'll add to the cards and provide a link below for those who are interested. Anyway, that was not the purpose of this video, so we will dive right to the measurement. Let me first move the soldering mat out of the way. As you can see here, I have an ESD mat on the workbench, and the ESD mat is connected to the earth ground. ESD mats are typically made of dissipative materials, and they are connected to the earth ground via a high resistance resistor, typically 1 mega ohm, so that any excessive charge would dissipate into the ground and prevent charge building up. We can verify the effectiveness of my ESD mat with this static field meter. Now, I'm actually just going to use an ESD mat to calibrate the meter. Technically speaking, I should use a known ground potential surface to do that. But in this case, we're mainly interested in the relative readings, so it doesn't really matter, although I know the ESD mat is grounded at ground potential. So let me actually turn it on here. So now the meter is on, you can see the reading. Let me just uh, zoom in a little bit so you can actually see what's going on here. Hopefully you can still read what is displayed on the meter here. Anyway, different field meters may work slightly differently, but the measurements are all calibrated at a known distance, typically a few centimeters away. And this one I have here has this flashing light system, you can see here. They have two lights, and depends on the distance, these two lights either diverges or they are actually merged onto the same point. So you want it to measure at a distance where these two lights are roughly at the same spot, which is uh, roughly here. So now you can see we are reading at roughly zero volts, so I actually do not need to calibrate it. But in case I do need to calibrate it, I just press and hold this button, and it will zero out. So let's actually do that. Yeah, it's roughly zero volts now. You can see here. So now we're calibrated, and you can see that, indeed, this is a zero volt surface, and you can see I can rub the surface and nothing actually happens. So this is a properly grounded surface. And sometimes the reading does vary a little bit, but it's very slightly. You can see that it's right around the zero volt mark. So that means everything is properly grounded here. Now let's take a look at the soldering mat we have here. Oh my goodness, off the bat, he's already showing some readings here. Wow, I'm not sure if you see that, but if I just kind of rub it around, you can see we have significant readings here. You can see that now it's like thousands of volts here. So this is not good. You can see the absolute voltage reading is significantly about zero, and at least several hundred volts at peaks. And at this level, some sensitive IC components can be easily damaged. That said, whatever the rubber material is for soldering is actually not as bad as some plastic materials. So let me actually show you that. So let me move this away. And let me bring in a plastic bag here. You can see this plastic bag is actually a lot worse. So you can easily accumulate thousands of volts of surface charge out here. And that's another reason why you should do your soldering work on a proper grounded ESD mat. As you can see, there is no surface charge at all. Anyway, if I were fixing some sensitive circuitry, especially that with expensive ICs, I would not trust these soldering mats at all, and I would stick to the proper ESD mat. A good ESD mat is not that expensive, and it should be able to withstand the heat from soldering iron. Alright, I hope you find this video informative. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will catch up with you next time.